Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host, a meteorologist DT from weatherrisk.com, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, the captain of catastrophe. It's time to talk about this week in weather, and the next couple of weeks for that matter. Some interesting topics here to talk about, even though we're entering a fairly quiet period, but still lots of weather to talk about. First, we'll talk about the Xmas through New Year's into the first week of uh, January 17th. Uh, there is, you'll see from the pattern that there's no threat of any moderate or big East Coast snowstorms all the way through January 5th to the 7th. Um, just don't see that in the pattern right now. Uh, the pattern is going to feature a lot of cold to warm transient pattern. Uh, and then we'll talk about whether or not the uh, Maddie and Julian oscillation is going to wake up and then move into phase 7 and phase 8 by uh, January 10th or so which could trigger a change in the pattern. So lots to talk about here, and I think you'll find this a really interesting episode of this week in weather. So let's get right to it. Right, this here is a current pattern as of uh, uh, this uh, Sunday evening, and you can see lots of different features here that I've talked about. Um, obviously, we have the uh, big tra uh, ridge here on the west coast, a little bit of a ridge here, uh, moderate intensity there. And you can see our flow is coming down to the northwest, so that's our cold Arctic outbreak. But we also have the southeast ridge here, uh, so that's holding the cold air uh, from coming into the east coast. And as a result, most of the cold air is in plunging down through this direction. And of course, we also have some other f uh, features up in here, which uh, we can uh, point out here. Uh, here we have a very positive uh, NAO. We have a positive uh, Arctic oscillation here as well. There's your polar vortex, as you can see here. Uh, we have a split PNA pattern here, but the northern ridge is kind of positive. And we have a positive EPO, or Eastern Pacific Oscillation, right here. So all those different things, that's what's going on in the pattern right now. Now this is, if you take a look at it, it's from a large-scale hemispheric pattern. And again, we can see some important features here. And this gives us a little better perspective. Here's our southeast ridge right here. And of course, you see this big upper low over Greenland? So that makes it a, a positive uh, NAO right here. You can see that. And then, of course, um, here we have a, a kind of a ridge here. So we have a neutral PNA pattern here. We have a positive EPO right here over Alaska with that big upper low over Alaska right here. Uh, the Arctic Oscillation is positive right in this area. And of course, the mean trough is right in here. And that's where the cold air is setting up. So that's going to be that way for the next couple of weeks. Now, this here is a surface map as of Sunday evening late or early Monday morning you can see the Arctic High centered over downtown Missouri and the temperature is quite cold this morning in many areas over the Midwest and the lower plains. Now this here was the um, Saturday morning temperatures and look at these numbers pretty impressive I mean uh, minus 20 these are actual temperatures in here minus 20 minus 30 up in here wow single digits down in Texas I mean you know cold here in the uh, over Virginia the mid-Atlantic a little bit on Saturday but cool well, very impressive cold temperatures here. And then this is the uh, temperatures as of Sunday morning. And then notice the sub-zero temperature is getting down into the, uh, I guess this would be here, the Texas Panhandle or Oklahoma Panhandle area. Meanwhile, the front is up through in this area. And you can see that we're still quite mild here in the east. But look at these temperatures again, minus 30, minus 20, many areas. Wow, impressive cold to say the least. All right, let's take a look at the Arctic, the Arctic Oscillation, the AO. And you can see that back in October, yeah, it was uh, negative, which is a good sign for the winter. There is a correlation between uh, having a negative Arctic Oscillation in October in the winter. But since then, it's been up and down, uh, negative and positive, negative, positive. And this is when it got cold in the pattern here. And now uh, the, pattern, the, the AO is going up in that direction. And this next image will give us an explanation for you uh, folks out there who aren't familiar with how the Arctic oscillations go with a positive and negative phase. When the, this diagram here shows the positive Arctic oscillation. And what happens is that the polar vortex is usually very strong when you have a positive Arctic oscillation. And it's usually located up here in the Arctic region. And because it's that way, what happens is you have a very strong winds around it in this direction. And you can end up getting a polar vortex in the Aleutian Islands and another one over Greenland. And when this happens, you have not only do you have a positive Arctic Oscillation, you often have a positive NAO. In this diagram, you can see the big upper low here. This would be a positive NAO here. And as a result, what happens is that the, you get a temperature boundary. Sometimes the flow can be rather zonal, where it's cold up in here and it's warm down in here. 
And that's pretty much what happens with a positive aortic oscillation. Now, this is the negative one. And what happens here is you end up getting high pressure ridge at the upper levels of the jet stream. So you end up getting a split. One piece of the vortex comes over here in this area. And then another piece goes over here. So as a result, you have a way of getting the cold air to come into the U.S. from Canada. And from, you often get a cross polar flow, as you can see that here. So that's what happens when you have negative Arctic oscillation. And sometimes the Greenland block and it push up into Greenland. Sometimes you can get an Omega Ridge, which is what we had 10 days ago from, uh, from Alaska and the Aleutian Islands pushing up into the Arctic region. And that forces the polar vortex to split and you get a negative Arctic oscillation pattern and get cold air coming southward. So this is a very interesting map. There's a lot of information too. I'm going to be posting these maps over on the website a little later. This here is the PNA pattern. Again, generally been positive, but then it's been dropping negative here or neutral over the last couple of weeks. And in, and, and in a uh, negative uh, PNA pattern, you can see that what happens is here's our trough in this area like that. And as a result, you get a tr in this direction as such. And of course, if you have a trough here, you have to have a ridge here. For every equal action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And you'll see in a minute, that's exactly what the pattern is right now. This is identical to the pattern. There is cross-polar flow here, but what happens is the cross-polar flow ends up going down in this direction. It comes down in here, not to the central or eastern U.S., but goes down the west coast. So people often think you can't have a cross-polar flow with a negative PNA. That's not correct at all. And this here is the positive PNA, which a lot of people are familiar with. This is also known as having the uh, ridge um, on the west coast, like here. And then sometimes the ridge can extend up into Alaska, which would be a negative EPO. So when you have the ridge on the west coast, that's a positive PNA, positive PNA. And when it goes up to Alaska, that's a negative EPO. So there you go. So anyway, what happens here is that you often end up getting a uh, big low in the Lucian Islands, and that causes the jet stream to amplify, and you end up getting this sort of pattern. And that brings the cold air down into the Midwest and the eastern United States. And again, you can cross polar flow, which drives into Canada, into the central and eastern U.S., all right, next slide. Let's look at the NAO. And you can see it's been very moderate, uh, really, since October. Uh, not slightly positive, slightly negative, slightly positive, slightly negative. Not a strong signal here one way or the other. And again, now this diagram shows us what's happened when you have a uh, negative, oops, let me call it up here, a negative NAO. You can see it right in here. And that's what, this, what happens is the ridge extends up into a Greenland like that. And that can cause the vortex to split, and you end up getting Arctic air in this way. Sometimes you can get a ridge on the West Coast, which will happen as well. And then you get the Arctic air into Europe and places like that as well. So that's what happens when you have a negative uh, NAO, or North American Oscillation. This next slide is the positive North American Oscillation. And what happens here is you end up getting um, the low right in this area. So you get a big 500 low right in this whole area in here over Greenland and of course that when that happens by definition you have a positive NAO and when you get a big upper low over Greenland you're always going to have that and what happens is of course the Arctic air is now diverted in this direction so down you get a southeast ridge on the into the western Atlantic Ocean and you often get quite a mild in Europe as well and we'll see that happening a little bit now we can see this is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation from Weather Bell and you can see clearly the trend has been up here it's positive down here, when this is when it was very cold and stormy in the east a little bit, and now it's gone up slowly positive and stays positive as far as we can see. So uh, that's not a trend. And this is how the Eastern Pacific Oscillation works. When it, when it is positive, you have a 500 low in this area here over Alaska. So what happens, you can often have a big contour, a lot of lows, a big a lot of contours around it like this. The low at 500 millibars is here. And what happens is you'll get another one off in the Gulf of Alaska as well. So the flow does this direction, which is, and this is Pacific mild air. All the cold air gets stuck up in here, and this is all mild. And so that's what happens when you have a positive uh, Eastern Pacific Oscillation. The negative Pacific Eastern Pacific Oscillation is when the uh, ridge on the West Coast extends up to Alaska, not just to Canada, but all the way to Alaska and the Arctic Circle a little bit. And that enables cross-polar flow to drive the cold air, the Arctic air, deep into the central and eastern U.S. So... And we can see in the Western Pacific Oscillation, again, all constantly going positive here as well. Now, this diagram shows how the polar vortex can shift and change. When you have a polar vortex centered over the North Pole, 
by definition, this is going to mean a uh, positive Arctic Oscillation. Now, sometimes you're going to be a very strong, deep vortex, but it comes southward, which is what we saw back in the winter of 2013-14. And when that happens, even though the polar vortex is very strong, it gets displaced to the south, and then you end up getting a negative Arctic Oscillation, which is what this is. Notice here you can have several polar vortex centers as well. One here, one here, one here. And then finally, this diagram also shows it again how the vortex can shift. In this case here, when the vortex, we have a large, deep, single vortex over the North Pole here. That's a positive Arctic oscillation. And when you have the, the vortex coming south like this, something usually pushes out of the place. It's usually a ridge at the upper levels, and that's often is a negative Arctic oscillation. Now, this here is a pattern 84 hours, and we can see, again, a lot of interesting features here. First, we have a positive Eastern Pacific Oscillation. You can see that. Why? Because of this area right here. Okay, here's your low pressure area. We have a super positive NAO. Why? Because we have a big 500 low over Greenland right there. You can see that. Neutral PNA pattern, and the Arctic Oscillation is very positive because of this feature in here. And the flow is straight across the country, just like the diagram showed, from west to east. Pretty interesting, huh? Now, this is the 144 hours out, and we can see, look, the trough on the west coast, ridge in the southeast. And what does that uh, classically remind us of? Yep, there it is, negative PNA. And, of course, uh, the Arctic Oscillation is strongly positive. The NAO is strongly positive. Why? Because look at the 500 low over Greenland. Positive NAO. And the EPO. Now, here we have a little bit of a ridge here in Alaska, so the EPO is gone negative. But what happens is the cold air comes down this direction like that. That is day six. All right. Here are the temperatures for the next five days. You can see all the serious cold is over the lower plains in the Midwest. And this here is the upper air pattern at the day uh, for the next five days from uh, the European ensembles. And you can see, again, a lot of the big features here. Uh, we can see the positive uh, NAO, huge right there, with very strong 500 low here. We have a big um, low, a low over Alaska, Gulf Alaska. It's a yeah, positive EPO. The PNA is neutral, and the Arctic Oscillation is positive. Well, that's that makes sense. That's about what we've been saying. Now, this here is uh, 240 hours. What's changed? Not much. <laughs> Again, we very clearly have this trough right here, right in this area here. There's the trough, and there's our southeast ridge right in here. So as a result, we end up getting a, um, a negative PNA. This should be, excuse me, this shouldn't be, uh, should be strongly negative PNA. The Arctic Oscillation, there's your polar vortex right in here and it covers Greenland so as a result we have a positive NAO super positive super positive AO and we have this 500 low over Alaska so this is a positive EPO this is a warm mild pattern with no snowstorms in it for the Midwest or the East Coast here's the 6 to 10 day takes us through Christmas and past it look how warm it is east of the Mississippi River Wow that's not a surprise in that sort of pattern and if here's the 6 to 10 day large scale there you can see it, all those features. This is a warm, warm pattern. If you want cold and you want snowstorms, almost every single feature on this map is completely wrong for that, for the eastern United States or the Midwest. This here is the 300-hour European, and we can see trough still on the west coast, a ridge over the eastern United States, no change there. And this is a zonal pattern. Now, what do we mean by zonal pattern? Well, the jet stream, the vortex is very strong here. As you can see and when you have it in the vortex like that it's usually a positive arctic oscillation and as a result the flow goes straight across the country it's cold up in here cool over here warm down in here and we can see that with uh, the pattern there that's what it looks like all the cold air gets locked up over central and northern canada and the flow is specific air it's dry air fast systems moving across the country and sure enough at 360 hours out we still have a trough on the west coast you can see that very clearly right here we're getting this ridge developing here maybe this is going to push towards Alaska again and we still have a ridge over the eastern United States the vortex is here and that means we have a strong, strongly positive uh, NAO and a positive Arctic Oscillation still so there you go not much change in the pattern now and then here is 11 to 15 day temperatures again quite warm and this is what it looks like on a large hemispheric scale not much changing in the pattern here folks so it does not look good through January 2nd now, longer term, here's the, the, the uh, CFS here for week three. 
which is January 9th, and it's beginning to develop some sort of a high latitude block, it looks like, or anomaly here over Greenland, which would be interesting. Now, we still have a deep trough here like this, but we are getting some sort of blocking here. So we'll see if that continues. And in fact, if we look beyond that at uh, week five, which takes us to the middle of January and beyond, we are getting a uh, signal here for a uh, negative uh, NAO, uh, excuse me, for negative Arctic oscillation, I should say, right in here. You can see that. Uh, neutral PNA, the NAO is still positive, uh, but also getting a n negative uh, EPO. We're getting a bit of a ridge here on the Alaska. So maybe this is the start of the pattern beginning to change. Maybe. Uh, this year is a European weekly. Uh, Mid-January, you see the trough returning to the uh, central portion of the U.S. and ridging on the eastern Pacific. And we can see the cold air returning here on the European weeklies as well in mid-January for most of the country. If we look at the EP, at the MJO, Maddie and Julian oscillation, we can see right now it's right here. It's neutral, as you can see that. It's not doing anything. But some of the models are showing that it might be coming out. This is the GFS ensemble, which brings it into phase 8 and 1 in early January. That would be cold in the eastern United States. In phase, there's 1, 8, there it is. That would be a cold pattern. So we want to see that happening. But so far... Yeah, nobody else. Only the GFS is showing it. The European is showing this to some degree, but very weak. What's interesting here is that the MJO experimental model actually brings it um, from Kyle and McRitchie, brings it all the way out. You can see here, this is January 17th, the phase 7. Phase 7 is cold in the east in January, and then phase 8 is uh, over here. would be very, That's phase 8 in here. This is a very cold in the east right in here. So if it gets into January 17th, the second half of January, it looks like it has promise in this area for significant snowstorms and stuff, or at least a colder pattern. Anyway, that's the report of this week in weather. I'm your host, meteorologist DT. Hopefully you learned something. And like I said, I'm going to post a lot of these slides on the website over the next uh, few days with some new information and new website pages coming up. I'll talk to you soon. Catch on the Facebook page.